Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome back to Cash Talks Football, where I break down all the goals scored in the Premier League, using my vast experience and doing many things in uh, the old football world, from coaching, being a sports agent, doing lots of different stuff. I like to break down the uh, what's going on in the Premier League and give you a different insight other than the other Muppets that uh, talk rubbish on the old TV. Now, today we're doing Aston Villa against Brentford, and some of these goals might be a little bit sort of um, cut up because I get hit uh, quite a lot by the Premier League on the old copyright strikes, and all of these goals are um, what I call Goals in motion from uh, from corner, sorry, from corners, ugh, from crosses. So it's pretty hard to sort of pick out and let it play and actually really show and identify what I do because I'm just going to get hit by a copyright strike. So if you see a couple of clouds or the rain in the background, that's some of the effects I try to put on. But yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now right now we're going to look at this first goal here from the Villa, and Villa. Um, I'm very disappointed that they didn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Man City the, the other day because they are the last team to beat City. And uh, I think they could have had a you know, better go for it. I know they've got some injuries and I've got some problems, but I still think they could have done a better showing than they did the other day. Now, we're looking at this ball coming in, and you're going to see a lot of this today. For some reason, you've got one, two Villa players not being picked up in the box. And you've got two defenders really, really close that could do that job. And neither of them are really doing it. And it seems to be a whole thing in this game that no one wants to bother to mark. So when the ball comes, comes straight, drops straight on this guy's head here. Bosh, is it a good ball? Yeah. Is someone gone with him running? Yeah. But they're not close enough. They're not tight enough. And it's a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, mess of a goal. It bounces around from the keeper. And then they have to do like one of those little checks because they see if it goes behind the line. And ultimately, you can see it goes behind the line. And to be fair, from the other camera angle, that I can't really uh, stop it quick enough. You can see it's behind the line straight away. I think they just do this to add more drama and make themselves feel important. Let's get on to the next goal. Okay, this is um, a good goal created by this guy here. He's not going to get the credit for it. Sorry, mate. The world's stupid. They're not going to see what you've done. He's made a movement, a little bit of a run forward here, opening up this space and pulling this guy out here. This guy's gone with him, not really aware of why and what he's doing. And what's ended up happening, these two guys here have completely um, let go of this guy behind him here. So now this ball can be threaded into the space that this guy's created by this guy following him and getting pulled out. Can you see that, Bosch? He's suddenly now panicked and reacted because he's gone too far with this player and he knows, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. I should have stayed in and held my shape. Oh, holding your shape is important. And when the player runs past you, you get somebody else to do that. Oh, like this guy here who's actually walking, doing nothing. And that's why he gets a free run into the... I do like his first touch, though, because he cuts it behind this little wee chap here. And I would show you normally, but I'm getting so close to getting my third copyright strike. And I'm just trying to keep this channel going to the end of the season. So um, he cuts inside really nicely here, but his finish is properly decent. I do like it. Hits it with his left foot. Beats the keeper. And to be fair, I think this keeper should have done better there. That's your near post. I don't know where he thinks he's going. Because right now, the player's running into so much traffic. He's clearly not going to try to whip it around him. And the keeper should actually make some sort of attempt there. And he doesn't. Let's get on to the next goal. This starts here from this cross coming in. From a, th a throw in on this side of the field. Now, we used to have this, uh, uh, this rule coaching. If they've got the ball on this side... Protect this side, because that's where the ball's going to end up, right? That's one of those things you always need to be looking at as coaching, because your players switch off. So you're going, right, because if they're over here, they're going to be crossing it, and they're going to come over here, right? So we have to make sure we have cover on this side. Right now, we've got one, two, and there's no cover in between. And, oh, look, we've suddenly got two in the midfield, uh, sorry, in, in the middle here. They've completely and utterly overload the middle, and Villa haven't responded in any way to have enough players back. Right now, there's four players, and he's not involved in the game. This guy's, I don't know what he's doing. If you don't know why he's not involved in the game, have a little think about it. He can't mark anybody. He can't stop anything. The only thing he can do is stop a cross along the ground, which they're not going to play anyway, because it's not what they do. They're going to play it in the air. So you're completely and utterly redundant in this game. If you're playing Man City, yeah, you might be, or an Arsenal, yeah, you might be useful, because that might be the area they're trying to exploit. Not this team. So you're useless. So when this ball comes over over the top, it ends up falling to this unmarked man. He just smashes it across the sort of goalie um, bo goal box area. And it's hilarious. This is, it hits his standing foot. He goes to strike it one way. The keeper's... That's what beats the keeper. His foot movement drags it so it looks like he's going to the keeper's right, his left. And it hits his standing foot and goes the other way. That's why he wrongs foot's the keeper. It actually hits the foot he's standing on and goes into the goal. It's a terrible goal. But it comes down to the fact that their team's in the right areas. They're all in the right places. And Villa aren't. Let's get on to the next goal. Now we're looking at the exact same area again where they just delivered a ball. They just knocked a ball in from the outside, swinging in, dosh, dosh, trying to play it in over here from that flank wide area, completely beaten last time. 
Now this time it's a little bit different. It's quite interesting because he's trying to make a near post run and this cross is just hit across and hoping somebody gets on the end of it. Sometimes they're the best ones. When people try to pinpoint their crosses, when you stop and you have a look up, generally when you've stopped, the defender now can stop and see where you're looking and where you're looking to put it to. So sometimes when you're just running and you hit it across and you just trust in your striker to get on the end of it, they're the better crosses. And that's what ends up happening here. He trusts his striker's going to get on the end of it and he does. Wax it in, gets himself a goal. Defenders aren't tight enough. No one's really close enough to help um, this defender because quite frankly, they're 2v2 again. That shouldn't be happening. There should be at least one other player helping these two. Oh, and look at matey boy again. Stood over here doing nothing he could have been helping but he's over here covering this area that no one's ever going to be in because you're playing the wrong team let's get on to the next goal okay this is a long little lofted ball out here to the flank and there's something that i've been noticing happening in the premier league lately is this defender here has no intentions of trying to win the ball on the challenge here which he should be he's running slowly and jogging and letting this guy bring the ball down and have a first touch where he shouldn't he should be right on him pressuring this first touch making him make a decision does he cross it first time does he try to turn back to the outside to keep possession and he doesn't he's so lackadaisical in what he's actually doing there's no real challenge watch he says he's getting there and he's had loads of time to get there and here's the problem because wait until i show his reaction at the end he knows he should have gone down and closed this ball this guy has taken the ball down inside the 18 yard box from a pass that was all 35 yards away so he had all of the this time to watch the ball actually sorry rubbish it landed here all of that time to watch where the ball was going and he was here and he could easily have put a sprint in and got there he put a sl slow jog in not a sprint and that's why he's in trouble so what ends up happening is the ball comes across the box and it's a simple tap in here's a simple tap in off he goes now watch this guy's reaction because he knows he should have closed that down bam he's upset yeah and he should be because it's all on you mate you've watched that but one of my things I, I point out especially when you're coaching teams and you're doing stuff you don't care if they've got the ball and they're allowed to smack it in 25 30 yards because you've got 25 30 yards you can close down and stop that first touch happening and if you don't this happens so basically what he's done he's allowed that ball to be taken down for free because he watched the ball in flight instead of pressuring the player that was going to receive it not good enough for the Premier League, mate. Not good enough. Speaking of not good enough for the Premier League, I've got loads of them in this clip right here. So we've got one player here who's trying to defend. We've got another player here who's absolutely useless. What are you defending, right? He's not goal side. The reason why you need to be goal side is because that's where he's trying to go. He doesn't. You don't care if he comes back here. It's irrelevant. So you're running around here with this player. Now, the other thing you're doing is you're getting in the way of this guy here because he's not sure how you're going to tackle or what you're going to do. You need to come around back here and stop him doing something. And you're not. You're just in the way. And because of that, this guy ends up getting an easy cross in. Now, this is a massive problem, these two clowns out here not being able to stop a cross. But that's not the main reason that this goal goes in. However, when this cross comes in, that is so easy from these two. There's no decent challenge to stop this ball coming across. You're winning the game. You're away at Villa Park. You need to be shutting that ball down, and they don't. This is the reason. This goalkeeper, the same one that was beaten earlier. Um, yeah, you know, which he should have made more of an effort on. Here, he's terrible. If you look at my thumbnail, you'll see that this guy's dived at the wrong point. He doesn't really get there. And if he does come, make sure he wins it. And he does. And this is what I'm pointing out. This guy here has been out jumped, right? He's a goalkeeper. He's allowed to use his hands. And the reason he's been out jumped is because he hasn't sprung off the right foot at the right time. And he hasn't got enough height on it. And that's why he's been beaten in the air. Not good enough. Overall, though, Villa needed a win if they want to secure that Champions League spot. But uh, yeah, lots of goals. Lots of fun. I'll see you next time on Cash Talks Football. Thank you.